everyone, Nick Walsh from LiveX here, and today we are going to be doing an all-intensive vMix training. We're going to be looking at all of the ins and outs of everything, as well as how we set up vMix when we're using it as a playbacks machine or a graphics machine. I have some things plugged in. Um, I have um, a production bot that we are going to be using for demoing this. It comes with vmix pre-installed um, and then for audio i have an avio dante um, plugged in and for video um, i'm going to be bringing in a variety of different sources um, and i also have this camera over here um, plugged into um, this pbot so we'll be able to use that as a demo camera so with all that said let's get into it so I'm gonna come over here to our production bot and you'll see vMix is started here. This is kind of its default state when it starts up. It gives you two blank inputs that get replaced as you start adding your own inputs. Right now I have external turned on. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but by default, it doesn't turn on for you. You do have to manually select what output you're gonna use and to turn it on. Um, but first, before we get started, let's look at these settings in the top right here. Um, here has pretty much anything um, you're going to need to do for vMix, including some things that we're going to want to set up right when we get started. So let's just go through these menus. Let's see what's important, what's not important, and what can be helpful. So over here, um, you see theme here. These things are not very different from each other, so I pretty much leave them on charcoal 8. Uh, you can change the colors here of preview program. I believe the default is green and yellow, so you can change it so output is red. Um, here's where you could change the master frame rate and output size. Um, this is what your project format will be, and you can see that here in the bottom left, that will match um, that selection over there. Um, something important to note, um, you do have to think about what inputs you're going to be bringing into your PBOT. While this can do frame conversion, um, they do recommend, and sometimes it doesn't even let you, um, not crossing between straight 30 and something that's um, dot .97 or something like that. So for example, if I want to bring in a source that's 29.97 and 59.94i, I can um, because the math works out the same. However, if I wanted to bring in a, a 50p um, source and mix that with something that's, you know, 5994i. Um, sometimes it does block you from adding those inputs that are out there. This is just because it um, takes a lot of processing power to have all these different frame rate types. Um, so you just want to think about that when you are building at a production. Um, things like decimators or um, Teranex AVs are really great at being a standards converter. Um, and that, that's super helpful when you're doing production. It is pretty flexible, especially when you're adding new things within vMix, um, but you do have to be aware, especially if you're bringing outside cameras or mixing between PAL and NTSC, um, to be aware of that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this here on 1080-2997. Output aspect ratio, here you can um, switch between these different options. I just leave it on widescreen. I don't entirely know what normal <laughs> refers to um, because I, on inputs you can have the source as an option, but I pretty much leave this on widescreen to make sure we're making the most out of our 16 by nine frame. Um, here is full screen options. This will have to do with any of your um, outputs on graphics cards. So that'll be an HDMI or display port output of the graphics card. You can be using that as a program monitor, as a multi-view, or to see just a single source. Um, and you'll configure that over here. You have two full screens that you could use and then you could configure them to the different monitors. So you'll just use this to match up with your Windows monitor configuration. And then here you can use that to your will. Um, but you just select which display here you'd like it to go to. So um, sometimes you can get it so the actual main display can turn into something with a full screen. I don't like doing that because then it blocks you from using vMix, but um, some folks might want that for some reason or another. Um, and also over here, you can designate the position of it, um, hide the cursor over it, which is really great if you do have something that you want to record um, out of this full screen. So that way you don't need to worry about having a mouse go uh, on it. Um, and then I like to leave it on top if possible, um, so that way um, there's no like Windows updates or like Windows things popping up on the multi view. Um, over here is also how you could change the input size, and this refers to the size of the boxes that appear for all inputs. 
Now what I'll say about vMix, vMix is really great, but the key to it is being organized. Um, it can do a lot of things, and so those lots of things can pile up. So being on top of organization and file structure is really important while you're building out a show, especially a complex one. So input size, I like keeping it as small as possible. For depend depends on the show, obviously. I like this just because it maximizes the resolution of the screen that you have, and you can see more inputs at the same time. Uh, you can make it bigger, if, for example, if you don't have the room to set up a secondary multi-view. Um, you can make these input sizes a little bit bigger so you could see cameras if you're trying to call cameras off of that. Um, but you could select this here. And then uh, I do believe if I do change this, I will have to restart vMix. Something to know about this setting windows is some of these settings do require a restart on vMix. So make sure if you are changing something in here that it's not during a production or a stream, um, just because it will go down while you have to restart. So I'm going to set this back here to what it was before.